All right, guys, so as you can see, there are so many things to state about a parabola. On the quiz tomorrow, I believe uh, each one of these things that you state will be worth one point. The parabola itself will be worth like three points. So you get a point for the vertex, for the axis symmetry, for the XY table or pattern, for the y-intercept, max or min. So let's go through these. Uh, here's our equation. We're going to start by finding the vertex. And on these first two, we have the uh, formula written for us. You should have it memorized by tomorrow. So x equals negative b over 2a. I like writing the negative on the b itself. Um, and when I plug in my b value, I need to identify them first. My a value is 1. My b value is negative 2. My c value is 0. It's not even there. So I'm going to plug in the b value of negative 2 right into those parentheses. So I really have a negative negative 2, which is going to change the positive 2. My a value is 1, so I plug in a 1 down there. So what do I have? I have x equals positive 2 over 2. Now, that's really the vertex x value of 1. So we need the y value. Okay, How do we find the y value? Well, we have to uh, plug it back into the original. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this equation right here, but with parentheses instead of these x's. And then I'm going to plug in the value of 1 right here and right there. And then I'm going to work it out according to PEMDAS, the correct order of operations. We start with exponents. 1 squared is 1. And then we go to multiplication. 2 times 1 is 2. We have a minus sign between it. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So the vertex y value is negative 1. And we have our first point right there, finding the vertex. Now the vertex is the most important point. Um, let's go to the graph and graph 1, comma, negative 1. So we're going to go 1 on the x, negative 1 on the y, and you get that coordinate right there. Now the very next thing you should do after graphing the vertex is to draw your axis of symmetry, something that we should all do naturally when we're graphing parabolas. Very next thing after doing the vertex is this axis of symmetry. Now the next question is, what is the axis of symmetry? And you can't just like point at it, that's ridiculous. You want to state the equation of the axis of symmetry, which is a vertical line. And any vertical line has the equation x equals. And you just state the x value that it crosses through, or the x value that it has. In other words, it's the same x value as your vertex, because you know it crosses right through the vertex. So the vertex, as we can see right there, x value is 1. So my equation is x equals 1. If you were to graph that on a graphing calculator, x equals 1, it would give you that vertical line. Okay, So that's another point right there. So keep that in mind. You have to be able to write the axis symmetry equation. Now, C, uh, x, y, table, or pattern. So I like, I love using the pattern, Okay, especially when my a value is 1. When my a value is 2 or 3, eh, not so much, but I still use the pattern. So what is the pattern? The pattern is 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Okay. Now, we first need to think about this parabola, whether it's opening up or down. Now, since the a value is 1, we know it opens up. So let's go to the vertex. And from the vertex, let's go 1 over and 1 up. And then we're going to go back to the vertex to do this 2, 4. So you go back to the vertex, and you go 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4 up. And last but not least, let's go back to the vertex to go 3 over 9 up. So back to the vertex, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right on the edge. And we need to map those over to the other side of the axis of symmetry. It's one unit away, so go one unit this way. And so on, and so on. Uh, once, what do I mean by that? Well, this was one unit away. This is two, so there's two units away. This is three units, so that's three units. It gets reflected over to the other side to get that perfect parabola. And we're done, guys. All we have to do is draw our parabola through those points. Um, try not to make it a V. Try to make it a little curved down there. Put the arrows on it because it does continue up forever. And that's another, right there, graphing it is another three points, OK? Three points for the graph. Now, down here, we need to state a couple more things. What is the y-intercept? What is the y-intercept? OK, so uh, where does it cross the y-axis? Well, it crosses right here. And that coordinate is 0, 0. That happens to be the origin. So for the y-intercept, 0, 0 is your coordinate. Now, um, the max or your min, uh, what is it? 
is this a maximum value or a minimum value? We should all see that it's from left to right, it's going down, it reaches a minimum value, then it comes back up. So that's definitely a min value. You get another point just for that, for circling that right there. Now the domain, you get another point for that, which is super easy. What is a domain? X equals all real numbers. Okay, once again, the domain of any parabola, whether it's wide or narrow or opening up or opening down, it always has the same domain, X equals all real numbers. The range, the range is Y is, is it above or below a certain value? Well, I see that it, that it's above I mean, it actually touches that blue line. And what is that blue line? If I were just to think about that blue line, that's the equation y equals negative one. So I know it touches negative one and it's above negative one. So what kind of inequality would that represent? That would be greater than or equal to negative one. So you get one point each for answering all that. Now, number or letter H, the last one. State the x-intercepts. Approximate if necessary. So we need to remember what are the x-intercepts, what are the y-intercepts. The y-intercepts is simply where it crosses, and it'd be nice if you could give it to me as a coordinate. Now the x-intercept, all I want are the x values, okay? Now you could give them to me as coordinates if you want, but all I really want are the x values, and it says approximate if necessary. So here's my x-axis. Where does this parabola cross the x-axis? It crosses at two locations, right here and right here, okay? so. Uh, we need to state this value of x, which is 0, and this value of x, which is 2. So once again, the answers to letter H are x equals 0 and 2. Ladies and gentlemen, that right there on the quiz will be worth 10 points. Think about that, guys. We have one point for the vertex, another point for the equation of the axis of symmetry, another point for the pattern, another point, uh, another three points for graphing, Okay, another point for a y-intercept, max or min, domain, range, so it all adds up, guys. Make sure you understand every bit of this. Let's move on to number two. Number two, let's find that vertex. I always do parentheses, and then I identify my a value is one, my b value is four, my c value is three. Let's plug in the b value of four right in there, the a value of one right down there. This becomes a negative four over a two, which means it's negative two. So my vertex x value is negative two. All right, that's what it says, x equals, x equals negative two. So if I wanna find the y value of my vertex, I must uh, plug it back in to the uh, original. And let me do it down here in this space. I'm gonna rewrite my equation, but with parentheses, instead of these x's, I'm gonna write parentheses. There it is, and then we're gonna plug in the value of negative two right in there. Then we go with the correct order of operations, negative two squared, uh, that becomes positive four. And then over here we have multiplication after exponents. We have four times negative two, that's a negative eight. Then bring down the plus three. Four minus eight is negative four, and negative four plus three is negative one. We just found the y value of our vertex. So negative one is the y value. And now we could actually go to number two, or, or to the graph over here, and graph that most important point, the vertex negative two, negative one. So negative two on the x, negative one on the y, there it is. Instantly, we should all draw our axis of symmetry right through that vertex. After that, we need to state the equation of the axis of symmetry, that is x equals, you have to put the x equals, guys, if you don't put that, it's gonna be wrong x equals negative two. That's your equation for the axis of symmetry. And now we need to use either a table or pattern. Now what do I mean by table or pattern? You could use an xy table and plug in some numbers. Of course you have to do a lot of math. The easier thing to do is to use the pattern one, one, two, four, three, nine from the vertex. All you have to know is whether it opens up or down, which clearly it opens up because uh, the a value is positive. So let's go to the vertex and let's go one over one up and put a dot there. And then we go back to two, four, back to the vertex. So remember always, you do the pattern and then go back to the vertex, okay? So one, one, go back to the vertex. Two, one, two, three, four. Go back to the vertex and the last one, three, nine. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the edge. And of course, let's reflect them to the other side, right there, right there, and right there. 
Now let's draw our parabola going through those coordinates. Put some arrows on it. And then uh, we move on to the next uh, part of the question, the y-intercept. So where does this parabola cross the y-axis? Here's the y-axis. Oh, it crosses right there. What is that location? That location is 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's the coordinate 0, 3. Okay, so you could put 0, 3 for the y-intercept, or you could just put the number 3 because it crosses the y-axis at the value of 3. So you could put that or just put the number 3. It's uh, totally up to you, okay, for the y-intercept. And now um, the max or min, what, uh, what is the max or min? We already know that the max or min is the vertex. So right here, all you have to do is identify whether it is a max or a min value. Let's just circle minimum. Um, and if somebody wanted you to state what is that minimum value, the minimum value you could say is the y value of negative 1, or you could even state the vertex negative 2 comma negative 1. But I'm just going to ask you to circle either max or min. Now let's go to the domain and range. The domain, everybody should know, x equals all real numbers. The range, that's the fun one. Y, it's either going to be above or below a certain value. As you can see, this is the lowest point. That's the minimum value. And it's all above that minimum value of Y. So what is that minimum value of Y? It's negative 1. The problem does not exist at negative 2 or negative 3 on Y. It only exists at negative 1 and above. So let me repeat that. It only exists at the y value of negative 1 and above. So how do we say that with an inequality? You say y is greater than or equal to negative 1. And finally, last but not least, it says state the x-intercepts. So what are x-intercepts? It's where it crosses the x-axis, approximate if necessary. So where does it cross? It crosses here and here. So both of these are the locations of our x-intercepts. So we need to find that those uh, locations. Now you could give them to me as a coordinate or you could just say the x values because we are talking about x-intercepts. So here's the x value of 0, so it's at negative 1 and at negative 3. So what could we say? We could say the x-intercepts are x-intercept is negative 1 and negative 3. Again, if you wanted to, you could give me a uh, uh, coordinates. So you could have said uh, negative 1 comma 0 if you wanted to and negative 3 comma 0. But you know just the values are good enough. Same thing with uh, the y-intercept. You could give me the coordinate or you could just give me the value. Let's move on to the next one. We're going to find that vertex first. And how do we do that? With parentheses. So negative b over 2 times a. Let's plug in, let's first identify the a value is negative 1, the b value is 4, the c value is negative 2. Let's plug in the b value of 4, let's plug in the a value of negative 1. And we will have um, a negative 4 divided by a negative 2, which is a positive 2 as an x value. So the vertex x value is positive 2. I need to find the y value, so let me rewrite my equation. But instead of x's, instead of these x's, I wrote the parentheses to plug in my value of 2. So let's plug in that value of 2, and let's do the math uh, with the correct order of operations. Exponents first, 2 squared is 4, but of course you have a negative sign right in front of it. And then I might as well multiply 4 times 2 because multiplication is after exponents. That is 8, so that's a positive 8, and then bring down the minus 2. And let's go from left to right. Negative 4 plus 8, that is positive 4. 4 minus 2 equals 2. So we found out that the y value is 2. So the vertex x value is 2 and the y value is 2. Let's go and graph that vertex of 2, 2. 2 on the x, 2 on the y, there's the vertex. The very next thing to do is to draw your axis of symmetry. And let's move on to the second thing that we need to give as an answer, the equation of the axis of symmetry, which is x equals simply the x value of your vertex, which is 2. x equals 2 is the equation. And then uh, you could use the pattern, or you could use a table. It's totally up to you. Um, we've been using the pattern a lot. Uh, we could use a table, but honestly, it's just going to take more time. So let's stick with that pattern, yeah? 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. All you have to do is be aware of whether it's opening up or down. And as you can see, number 3, 
it has a negative A value, so it's opening down. So instead of going one over one up, you know it's opening down, go one over one down. And then go back to the vertex for two, four. Back to the vertex, go two over, one, two, three, four down. And last but not least, let's go back to the vertex and do three, nine. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right there. And we're just simply gonna mirror all the coordinates over to the other side of the axis of symmetry, right here, right here, and down here. Let's draw our parabola. Sometimes when I'm graphing too quickly, if I'm in a rush, I'll mess up. So make sure that you have the equal spaces, one unit away from the axis of symmetry, one unit away. Two units away, two units away. Three units away, three units away. There's our graph. That's the most important part of this whole problem. You get three points just for the graph. Uh, the y-intercept. Where does this parabola cross the y-axis? It crosses right here at negative 2. So you could just say the y-value of negative 2, or you could give the coordinate 0, negative 2. It's totally up to you. I did put parentheses there for some reason, so I guess you could write it as a coordinate. Is this vertex a max or min value? It's definitely a max. If you get a ball and throw it up in the air, it's going to reach a certain max height, then it's going to come back down. Uh, what else? If you wanted to give the max height, you could say that the max value is 2. Or you could say y equals 2. Or you could actually give the coordinates of the vertex itself, which is uh, 2, 2. So it's totally up to you uh, if I ask you to give me that. But on this, I'm just going to ask you to circle it uh, to give me either max or min. Uh, moving on to the domain, everybody should know x equals all real numbers, and the fun one is the range. Y is, it's either above a certain value or below. So it's a max value, which means that this whole parabola exists at that max value and below. So what is that max value? That max value is 2. So it's Y is at 2 and below 2. So how do we say that as an inequality? Less than or equal to 2. Let's move on to the last part, state the x-intercepts. So where does this cross the x-axis? And notice, it says approximate if necessary. Uh, right now, we haven't uh, learned the skills to give exact values. So what I'm gonna say is that the parabola crosses, it's definitely between zero and one. So it looks like a, I'm gonna give a decimal approximation here, maybe like a 0.6, that's what I'm gonna say. So I could say x-intercept is at, Actually, I'm going to do the squiggly equal signs, which means approximately 0 0.6. And it looks like it crosses right here at, let's see, what's that location? 1, 2, 3, 3 and a half maybe. So you could do uh, 0.6 and uh, 3.5, right, 3 and a half. Anyhow, let's uh, continue to the next one. Number four, start with the vertex formula. And of course, let's use parentheses. And let's identify the A value is negative 1, the B value is negative 2, the C value is 0. So let's plug in negative 2 for the B, and let's plug in negative 1 for the A. We will have a positive 2 over a negative 2, which means that the X value is really negative 1. Now to find the Y value, we simply plug it in. And please notice that I put parentheses instead of the X's. So let's plug in that negative 1 right inside those parentheses. Let's do the correct order of operations. Please do not change these negative negatives to positive positive. Once again, the rule for changing the minus minus to plus plus is because a negative times a negative equals a positive. But we do have to do exponents before multiplying. So you have to do that exponents first. Negative 1 squared is 1, but it still has a negative in front. And then we have uh, negative 2 times negative 1. So you could do that multiplication. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, which means that our y value is 1. So the vertex is negative 1, 1. Let's graph that. Negative 1 on the x, 1 on the y. There it is. Then we're going to draw our axis of symmetry right through it. Axis of symmetry right through it. And then we're going to state the axis of symmetry as an equation. That would be x equals the x value of our vertex, which is negative 1. And then we're going to use the pattern, because the A value is negative 1, we're going to use the pattern 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9 from the vertex. And it is opening down 
because the A value is negative one. So we're gonna use the pattern one over, one down, put a dot right there. And then you go back to the vertex and you go two over, one, two, three, four down. And last but not least, three over and nine down. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the edge. Simply map them over to the other side. Draw your parabola. And let's continue with filling everything else out. The y-intercept is zero. Now you could give that as a coordinate, uh, zero, zero, or you could just say y-intercept is zero, whatever you want. This is a max value. And the domain, x equals all real numbers, and the range, is y is less than or equal to that max value of y, uh, which was positive one. So y is less than or equal to the max value of one on the y. And how about the x-intercepts? Where does it cross? Approximate if necessary. You could clearly see it crosses here and here. That is the location of zero and negative two. So x equals zero and negative two. X-intercept equals zero and negative two.